Hi, this is Dr. Ben Morrill. Welcome to episode 45 of Reptile Genetics Weekly. Glad to have you here. Uh, once again, to start off with, we will give you an update on results going out. Um, so the next big run where we're doing the, the testing that isn't part of the FAST test yet, which is quickly becoming less and less. Um, but for those of you getting full panels or, or tests that aren't quite yet part of our FAST testing, uh, that next run will start, I think, the end, mid to end of next week. Um, so we'll have results probably by the end of the first week in February. That's the, the plan right now, or March, sorry. <laughs> by the end of the first week in March, that's when we're looking to have the next results uh, go out to you all. So it might be that, that uh, first full weekend in March. Uh, when when we have it all analyzed and, and we're updating things. As you all know now, a lot of the time those updates for results end up going up on the morph market and clutch at like, you know, weird hours and in the evenings or on the weekends. But but anyway, that's the plan for that. And fast test results, uh, some went out a day or two ago, some more going out today. I have some uh, right now to analyze when we're done with the show, I'll analyze those and, and we'll get them sent out. So this is um, Tuesday by Tuesday evening. We'll have uh, a whole bunch more fast test results out to people. So really, really nice now that we've got 10 of those to, to do but that we can do. Uh, but yeah, Kayla, how are you doing? Hey, Ben, I'm doing great. I've got yeah. a couple rat snakes paired up. I have a hog nose that I'm pretty sure is in her prelay shed. So Life is awesome right now. Uh, I had my, uh, my every year as it gets close to baby time, I start having egg hatching dreams. I had my first one. Last uh, <laughs> I never considered having egg hatching dreams, but that's precious. It happens uh, what, every single year when I haven't hatched out eggs in a while. And it's getting yeah. close to like when they're breeding and get starting to get eggs and stuff. This time, funny though is yes. they were it was specifically two different angolan python clutches one just got laid and the other one was already hatching out huh and uh but yeah i haven't bred angolan pythons for like 10 years <laughs> oh maybe it's a sign to get back into them <laughs> yeah, they're cool animals that's for yeah. sure yeah well cool uh so let's get into uh um well what we've got going on you were talking about fast testing right yes yeah just a reminder of the the 10 that we can do right now and I just designed a whole bunch more. So I've got more coming and then I'll be able to work on, if you go to the next slide, um, yeah. over the next few days, I'll be getting yellow belly albino, lab albino, mm -hmm. ultra mill, cryptic, you know, all of those um, should be working either this week or next week. And then that next batch of like eight or five to eight, something like that, um, yeah. that will be probably ready the week after that. So. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, we're still on track for a total of about 15 by the end of this month. And then still, once again, trying to be by sometime in April, hopefully the, the first week of April, we'll have everything as a fast test, including the ball python sex determination test. So, oh, that would be awesome. Um, I know. Quick. So, yeah, for real. Uh, I know someone maybe may have asked before, is there any sign of like uh colubrid um sex determination tests being moved into fast testing or is that further down the line um so that one is a very complicated test compared to these others um that took many 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 months to get dialed in gotcha and whenever i've had to switch systems a little bit i've had to rework that and when we started running them in Texas, I had to rework it again. So that one is uh, much okay. more complicated to get to work well. Yeah. Uh, but I think that uh, within the next two to four weeks, we'll likely have where we're doing the Kluber test at least once a week. Yeah. Uh, so whenever that shed comes in, um, we should have Kluber sex determination uh, test results within seven to 10 days. Uh, if it came in right after we ran it, then, you know, it might, might be a bit longer. A but... full week after that before it gets run again. But, but yeah, that will be faster as well. Um, we may cool. eventually get to where we can run it two or, or three times a week. So then yeah. we can just get that turnaround down more like three to four days. Um, but it, it probably won't ever, unless we have a lot coming in, if we like in the summertime yeah. might, 
we might be running it every single day because we have so many yeah. coming in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I would say a pretty realistic turnaround for a colubrid sex determination would be like three to four days would probably be about the fastest we could do it. Like, you know, January, February time, time frame. Um, and I, I would say it, over the next month by, by, uh, sometime in the end of, you know, mid to end of March, we should be at least running it once a week. So you, you'll have pretty good turnaround. Good stuff. Um, and so the last time that you talked about high OD, you said that you were running some tests on that, right? Yes. Yeah. So that, that we did get results and they're interesting and, uh, we're still kind of discussing those and and kind of coming up with more sheds that we want to uh, have come in and get tested. So so we're still working that and uh, we will definitely get back. We might even have a couple of episodes where we talk about OD and high OD. Um, but oh, we're cool. still kind of gathering some more information. And uh, if you have any um, historical samples, kind of like early OD or high OD or, you know, uh, interesting ones or ones that maybe you've line bred or, you know, something like that, uh, let us know. And we'll, we'll definitely be working on OD and high OD uh, story over the next month or two. Okay. That'll be really cool. Uh, I know a lot of people are interested in it. So awesome. Uh, let's see. Next, um, let's talk, let's talk rep the reptile shows. Uh, we had a few last year, but, uh, and we've got one of those pictures there of Sean, uh, with some friends that we met out in, I think that was the Daytona show. Yes. Um, so uh, what what are shows looking like for us? Yeah. So uh, Sean's reached out to NARBC and let them know, hey, let us know what ones you have some some table availability. Um, mm -hmm. If you're if you're vending at one and have some space, you want to have a, a close neighbor, uh, let us know. Um, but as of right now, we'll, we're planning, Sean will at least go to Arlington. Don't know for sure if we'll have a table, but that's, that's right by Sean. And then Anaheim, I think, and that's in July. I think both Sean and I will, will go to that one. And then, uh, awesome. Daytona and Tinley, uh, we may be able to both go to, to all three of those. We'll see. And we'll have to see, uh, what all Kayla's got going on. If she can come to one or two of those as well. I want to go to Tinley <laughs> or it. Daytona. Uh, honestly, any of them. Uh, so, you know, yeah, yeah. It'd be awesome. Good ones to go to. <laughs> yeah. Cause I had so much fun at Arlington last year. It was a blast. Have you been so. to Daytona or Tinley before? No, I haven't. It will, it'll be my first, the first ones. Yeah. Uh, only other one I've been to was like a Roanoke Repticon way back in. Well, okay. Way back in the day. It was like, right like three, four years ago. So yeah, that was right before, uh, covid exactly yeah yeah all right well sweet so uh, let us know in the comments you know if there are any uh any shows you're hoping that we attend um we'll keep our eyes out for it as we're planning through the year so yes uh, yeah. just let us that know would be, be a good time to comment in this video because we're planning right now so let us know what oh yeah where, where we're missing out and uh, we'll see if we can add it this year or, or next year definitely uh, so there was a cool article that dropped yesterday on the New Yorker um, and their, uh, as they call the Brave New World Department, uh, where a journalist has been interviewing uh, um, Justin Kobilka of Canova and a lot of other really familiar faces um, about the ball python world. Uh, yeah. We have, uh, it's titled Skin in the Game uh, for the print version that's coming out on the 26th. But uh, Ben, I'll let you talk about the article since you're the one who uh, sent it my way at first. Yeah, so this is really cool project. Um, Justin Kabelka has been working with her for a while, and I talked with her briefly at Tinley. So those of you that were at Tinley, some of you may have bumped into her as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty cool because it it is really another step, another you know big thing to be able to full further legitimize our industry and our hobby. Um, this will put put the information in front of a bunch of people that most likely otherwise never would have realized just how much interest, how many people they talk about the fact that there's 6 million households that have a, a reptile in them. And I think that's an older number. It wouldn't surprise me if it's significantly higher than that after COVID. Oh yeah. Yeah. They talk about how much some of these animals have sold for and, you know, it's really, really, really cool. Well done article. It's 
fairly long. It's a lot of really good information and talks about some of the pros and cons, you know, both sides. But uh, I like it the most, kind of just like the the genetic testing is a way to, you know, further legitimize our industry. This this article is another one that that will put our information in front of a lot more people that wouldn't otherwise even have a clue that that we exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and like, I was amazed scrolling through it, like some of the names that I saw in there, you know, of course, there's Justin with Canova, but I saw them, uh, I, I saw them name drop like Courtney of Leviathan Snakes, saw Antoine with High Desert Pythons, Best Dress Balls, uh, Brittany Gobbles over there in the bottom right of uh, Gobbles Reptiles. Um, uh, and of course, Snake Discovery, Bob Clark, Nerd, uh, Will Banks, um, all of these guys that we know really well in our hobby, but who may be less familiar to uh, like society, society as a broader uh, whole there. But um, they talked about some like really some of the bigger stories uh, in the hobby as well, uh, like the red ball scandal um, mm -hmm. back in the day. So you see that in the second paragraph I have up here, um, which was, uh, what, what year was, did that happen, Ben? Do you remember? It feels like, I don't know, five to eight years ago, but eight years. Wow. Something like that, but I, I could be off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was before I got into the hobby. Like I'm, I'm still kind of a baby in the reptile world, but uh, definitely an interesting one. Um, and yeah. you know, they referred to genetic te people in the genetic testing world as a uh, 23 and me for snakes, um, yeah. which is, I mean, uh, yeah, actually I'd never heard it put that way, but I guess it, I guess it kind of works. Yeah. Oh yeah. For a lot of people that think of genetic testing and pets, um, you know, yeah. that's probably a good way to describe it. It's, you know, we're, we're not quite doing the same type of a test, but it is something we're working towards as we get more and more sequencing done, you know, we'll be able to do more and more things. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would say in three to five years, we'd have a, a similar test as 23andMe that's taking in information from the whole genome and, you know, be able to tell you things that uh, right now we, we can't, but as we do more and more sequencing and testing, we'll, we'll build a database that we can uh, work from to let people know, you know, where their animals are from or, you know, all the different, we could have 60 or 70 different mutations that we know cause color and pattern traits and how, yeah. all that, and how animals are related to each other and for other species, you know, if they're from different localities or whether they're the same species or, or hybrid, you know, there's a lot of things that we'll be able to do over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a really cool article. Uh, and, um, I mean, like you said, it helps to, uh, you know, kind of put what we do out in front of a broader audience and help legitimize the hobby. It's not just a bunch of, it's not just a bunch of, you know, dudes with a bunch of snakes who are like, yeah, come talk, come, come look at my snakes, which we are that, but, it's more than that. <laughs> um, there's uh, a really interesting, like living art uh, perspective uh, to it. Plus a genuine love of the animals, which I think is the best thing we can do to, um, you know, put our best foot forward with the hobby. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the uh, emoji pied, the, the dream yeah. of Justin's. We had the picture. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, how viral that went and how people thought that it was just photoshopped. He had to do a, a video to show people that it's like, real. It's real. It does have orange smiley faces on it. <laughs> yeah. Adorable animal. I think it's actually still, it's either that animal or, uh, or a, a dream sickle. I think that's the morph name uh, or a different dream sickle related to it. That's still up on their website to this day. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, it's an incredible looking animal. You would never think something could look like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, re it's real cool. Also, an update from last week. Uh, we had Tom Barnhart on to talk about some of his black pastel lines. Um, and, of course, we were ooing and aahing over this amazing number 13 mm -hmm. animal who was uh, a yeah. banana, black pastel, some other amazing stuff, um, who was also surprised. Uh, het for OD and Leopard. 
Uh, but the person who got her, um, cause she had mailed out like the day before we recorded. Um, and that person, uh, graceful pythons actually commented on our, our, uh, episode. Um, she said, hello, everyone. I'm the lady who was lucky enough to get number 13. She is even prettier in person. I love her so much. And the extra genes are a wonderful surprise. Thanks so much, Tom, for a wonderful animal. Awesome. Love seeing that. Thanks for posting, Graceful Pythons. Yeah, I, I pinned it there. Um, if everybody wants to go tell her how jealous they are of <laughs> getting <laughs> such a cool animal. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sure. Yeah, and I bet she is prettier in person. Oh my gosh. Last but not least, it's a nice short episode, but we always like to finish out with a why I do this or a why we do this episode, uh, um, not episode, but uh, part of our segment um, where we just talk about what makes the reptile hobby worthwhile to us. Um, and for this round, we have uh, down to clown.bp on Instagram who commented, I do this because I recently found a love and passion for reptiles and believe they are extremely underrated as pets. Let's spread the word and grow this reptile hobby. Um, short, sweet, and I agree. Very good. And yeah, that New Yorker article is a great step in that direction. Get the word out and hopefully have more people thinking about and potentially down the road interested in keeping snakes and, and other reptiles. It's, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I agree. They are so underrated as pets. Uh, I tell my coworkers all the time when they ask, you know, why snakes? And I say, well, uh, I mean, they're cool. The holding them is like living meditation. They're pretty. And I mean, they eat once a week. They poop once ish a week. Uh, they're low maintenance, but also just. I mean, I think they're gorgeous. Uh, and yeah, I like the fact that they're lower maintenance. It's. It's nice. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. So underrated, and of course, great for great for education too. Uh, ben, you got anything for us uh, before we just, end the episode? Just uh, any any of the rest of you out there, if you've got a why I do this, a story, a picture, a video, um, send them in. We we love being able to show those. Like like we've talked about many times with the economy as it is, and things may be a little slower. It's, it's extra nice to be able to think about, you know, why we do this, uh, why, you know, in my case, I've been doing it for over 20 years and it's just, you know, kind of like Kayla was saying, uh, a living meditation. It's also a, a living art and uh, a cool thing that every year I know I'm going to make something different that I've never made before. And so, yeah, send those stories out and and once again, like we said at the beginning of the episode, let us know if there's any shows that that we're not going to yet that you think would be good for us to get to and sound off in the comments. So we appreciate it. All right. Uh, retweet that. I don't think, what, what is it? Called? It's still called a retweet on X, right? <laughs> Whatever it's called. I don't know. I'm not on there. Um, anyway, Can't thanks say. everybody. <laughs> thanks thanks for watching guys make sure you like subscribe comment uh, it helps us with the algorithm and uh we'll see you guys next week thanks thanks and outro in three two one <laughs>